treasure, Bandicoot 2. Vortex strikes back. Alright, hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Um, yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to stay quiet there for the intro and, well, the announcer guy says the name of the game anyway, so there wasn't really much, much of a point on me saying the name there, but, you know, it's something I do, so kind of just a force of habit, I guess, but yeah, I'm getting into this pretty early, like, I, during the time this is... Um, being recorded. Not all of Crash 1 is even uploaded yet. I really need to get on that. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, cutscene's gonna happen in a sec, so I may as well just continue talking in a minute. So, enjoy. <laughs> Alright, so let's go into level one. Now, you can uh, you don't actually have to go uh, go through the um, little opening section. If you just load the game or something, you'll go straight to the warp room and you'll skip that. Or you can just... I don't know if you can uh, pause the game and go to the warp room uh, like that. Or anything like that. I, there's probably a way, a way to do it. Like, you can probably get a game over in, in like... By getting hit by a enemy or falling down a pit, and then going and then just having it warp you there. But then again, that would just be a lot. That would, that would just take a lot more time than just just going to it normally. So yeah. But you're probably wondering why I'm avoiding all these boxes here. Now there's a good, really good reason for that. Um, in this very, in this first level here, issue. Um, Go through without breaking any box, you'll get the blue color gem, which is a type of gem that was that was in uh, Crash 1, but in that game, it was just the same as getting a regular clear gem. It was just a matter of what level... It, it was just a matter of being in the right level to get the color... to get a color gem. In this game, though, and in Crash 3, you have to actually, like, do a... Mo main, most of the time, you have to do... A specific task or go through a specific pathway in order to get the colored gems and it kind of requires you to think a little bit more outside the box instead of just going just doing your regular thing like break all the boxes and just be done with it um, and it doesn't really tell you too much of how to get them sometimes well most of the time really um, like I think there are there are some I like ideas that it can give you, I guess, but most of the time most of the time you're on your own to try different things which I can see being a kind of annoy an annoying thing for some for some people, but since I played this game a lot later than most people, I 
I didn't I didn't play this game until a couple years back actually, um, and I I actually played this game after I saw pretty much all the game uh, from LPs and stuff like that. And since I knew where mo pretty much all the secrets were and all that, I didn't really have an issue. But I can I can imagine like someone a new a newbie to the to the Crash series or something um, kind of having an issue. With um, with getting some of these colored gems, but I thing is I I don't think it's too bad because you have uh, these levels aren't particularly long uh, or marathons, so it's not too taxing to go through a level and just explore what you what you may be able to do because there there are again there are there are kind of like hints sometimes like. Oh, you see a a fit a clear like a, a see-through looking platform or something, and then you'll think, hmm, I wonder how to how I can activate it, and then you'll just like just try different things, and eventually eventually you'll probably figure something out something out. It, it is pretty um obvious what um ones you what were clear platform or not clear platforms, but. Um, what see-through platforms ne you need colored gems for because they'll be colored in a specific color So it's a bit it's a bit like the in crash one where you kind of saw a small gem a uh, colored gem platform just sh shrink as you went nearer but with it with this game and crash free uh, that it's just It's basically just see-through really all right. Come on. Let me get that <laughs> But yeah, I, I really do love the uh, changes they made to the gem system because, for for starters, you don't have to worry about dying in a level now. Like, uh, you can go through a level, and one every time you hit a checkpoint, that's gonna save the uh, amount of boxes you broke. So that it, it's hard to explain how much of a lifesaver that is. Um, for people who haven't played the Crash games, but believe me, if you've if you played uh, Crash One and gone to Crash Two, you'll you'll notice the difference. Like it, it's so relieving not to worry about that. All right, and now we get introduced to the famous Crash Dance. I'm pretty sure all of you guys know this. Oh yes. Now listen carefully. These holograms are hard to maintain. During the course of my intellectual pursuits, I have stumbled across a force that threatens to destroy the world. Crystals are the only means of containing it. Fate of the world is at stake. It is imperative, therefore, to bring them to me. That definitely doesn't sound for an Yeah, the it's pretty obvious that Cortex is really the bad guy here, but you know, Crash isn't really known for being smart, so we gotta do what he says, I guess. But hey, <laughs> uh, but going going back to how like uh, the the changes they made to Crash Two, um, the I think everyone can agree with this. Like the most noticeable difference is just the controls and how it plays. Like it, this is. One of the, uh, in terms of like improving the the how the game feels, this is one of the best sequels to a game. Really, like everything's feel everything feels more fluid. Like the jump doesn't feel so stiff anymore. Like it has a lot of, uh, well, I wouldn't say weight, but it has more. What's the right word? But um, I don't know, man. It is, it like. It feels like you can do more with it instead of like how Crash One was a very stiff jump. Like you couldn't really, you could you could only really do what the game intended you to. You you couldn't really be experimental and uh, do wild things at all, which is something that Crash Two and Three really do approve upon. Like you can you the game's controls like how like how you play the game is a lot more flexible. You can attempt you can uh, do a lot more. A lot more cool tricks and shortcuts in this and free and it just makes it a lot more enjoyable to play really 
It doesn't. It also helps that the animations and everything just flew like flow so well with the with how the game plays. I mean, and then you have and then you have like um, the, the new moves like the uh, slide jump and the the slide jump and uh, and just the slide in general really like they. Mm. You don't have to use them. Like you, you can, you can just go through the game, uh, if you if you want to, by just jumping and spinning, like in Crash One. But if you want to be more creative, you can you can uh, do a slide, do a slide and uh, jump after sliding. If you want to, if you want to like jump higher, or like basically just go by go by the level a bit faster. As um, again, not something you really have to do for the most part. There are some boxes that are easier to get to by doing the slide jump, but most of the time you can just jump normally. But, again, it's just, it's just kind of fun to, uh, like, speed through the game. Calm down. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's just my copy, but sometimes the voice glitches out. It's like, it just kind of cuts off at the last second. It's pretty great. And you, if you saw the uh, Seas Brain run, you'll see me see that I did a few funny little jokes with that, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, one other trick you can do with the- oh gosh, that was close. But yeah, one other trick you can do with um, the uh, the slide is that if you spin at the very end of it, your momentum will carry over and you'll go- and you'll keep, like, again, well, obviously you'll carry, you'll be carrying the moment momentum, so you'll just keep going and going, and you, you can just keep doing that. It's really good with speed for speed runs, as if you as you as you would imagine. So, yeah, especially for, and it would it ha really helps for stages like this. But yeah, it's pretty obvious what you need to do with this, the timer and all that. It's like. It's one of those things where you kind of just, uh, again, experiment, because you don't know for sure that there's going to be a gem there, but you're in because there's a timer, your instinct is probably just got to go fast, so you just kind of go for it, and then, uh, lo and behold, a gem. So yeah, it's like, it kind of gives you a, I guess, feeling of what you need to do, but without actually telling you straight out, which I think is good. But yeah. This is one of the. F well, actually, no. Uh, uh, Crash 2 borrows, a, I think, two level themes from Crash 1. Uh, this being uh, the based on those what river levels, basically, in Crash 1. Except this one's a lot more fast paced, for sure. It's. It's more for a jet ski level, it's not so much a platforming level. Oh, gosh. Ah. But yeah, and these are clearly ripped right from Crash 1, but hey, you weren't really platforming much on the mushrooms on the trees that much in Crash 1, so it was mainly uh, iron boxes really, so 
I, I, I do kind of like the environment, so I'm not complaining. And here we go. That's one thing I do like about Crash 2. Um, over, over Crash 3, actually. Even though I think Crash 3 is the overall better game. Um, I do appreciate that Crash 2 uh, makes the, an 100% playthrough more streamlined. Because you don't have to worry about reli uh, relics. Relics. Bleh. <laughs> you know. But um, you don't have to worry about that. And also, most of the color gems... Uh, the color gems you need um, are set out so you never have to go... Okay. I thought I didn't think I was going to get on that box. <laughs> it's kind of weird for me to explain this. Like, um, I don't know. But um, it's like... Okay. Um, so there's a color gem path in Warp Room 2, but I don't have the color gem. That color gem is in Warp Room 3, and it's a lot more lenient. Like you don't have to go too far, too far into the game in order to in order to get like a specific colored gem for a level, or or all of them in general. I I think you get all of them by the end of Warp Room 3, I believe. But in Crash 3, it's um the the color gems are a lot more spaced out than Crash 2. Which makes it a lot more, um, takes it, makes it take a lot more time to complete, fully complete the, the warp rooms in that game. And, I can kind of understand, like, that being one of the factors of people pre preferring this game over 3, but I don't think it's enough of a factor to, for me to prefer to, like, it's, it's nice to have, like, nice to be able to finish the wo finish worlds um, almost in one go but I still prefer the levels over and crash free so it's not really gonna uh, send me over to the to this game over free like I don't know I just prefer the levels in free more but that's just me they both control beautifully though like oh gosh no don't don't do that I will say though, one thing I don't like is that in I'm playing this on PSN, and because of that, I have to use a D-pad. Like I've tried, I've tried going into the menu, switching it to analog, and it switches back instantly. You can't do anything, and it really sucks because I had the um, well, I have I should say that was a fail, <laughs> the um, physical copy thanks to. Oh, okay. Thanks to going to a convention one time, and I got the um, the game there. However, it, it 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 always crashes whenever I go to a specific level, which we'll get to back in all the way in Warp Room Three, I think. And yeah, I just couldn't do anything. It just freezes every time I go there, and I had to just result in buying a PSN copy, and. It functions perfectly fine. Like, don't get me wrong, but I just, I just, uh, I'm just not a fan of using a D-pad in a 3D and 3D environment. Like, to be fair, Crash, fr Crash, the Crash series is mainly linear hallways and whatnot, so it's not too bad. But I just prefer using analog sticks most of the time. Like, two, two D games are the only are the only times really where I'll I'll use a d-pad and even then sometimes I use sometimes I use the analog but yeah that's just I just prefer using analogs over these d-pads honestly um I, I I'll totally I can totally work with D like d-pads in 3d games but it's just not my ideal way to play you know like I played I played a good chunk of other other M, despite what people say. Um, I mean, I'm not a fan that it's D-pad controlled, but I'm still relatively having fun with it. Like, it's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm still having fun with it. But yeah, either way, I just prefer analogs, and that was the longest run of D-pads versus analog sticks ever. But yeah, what are you gonna do? I ramble a lot. <laughs> oh, 
Alright. There we go. Cha! Ugh. Cha! Also, I swear that's the same sound effect that you get uh, from getting a gem in Sparrow. Alright. After Warp Room 1, we won't be seeing very many of these. Alrighty. So let's go to the pits. 